So I'd like to welcome everyone to the 16th episode of Money Trees. I have a very, very special guest here with me today. A good friend of mine, Winnie K. How are you doing today? I'm good, good, good. Blessed. Can't complain. Ooh, How are you? Love that. <laughs> love being blessed. I, I am blessed yeah. and highly flavored as I've been. That's been my saying all 2022. Yeah, yeah. Where in the world are you at right now? I'm actually now in Atlanta. Okay. Um. Yeah. I, I'm a little bit outside the city today. I'm like north of Atlanta, but yeah, typically now based in Atlanta. Just got back from Africa, from Kenya last month. So that was good to get away for a little bit. But I'm back now. Oh man, I I feel like we talked a little bit when you were out there. I hope every everything is going good with the fam. Everyone yes. is healthy and, you know, making strides there. Yeah, every everyone's good. Everyone's good. Finally kind of open now. We, we, I mean, Kenya pretty much had a a lockdown for about two years. <laughs> so, so now everything is kind of just opening back up, which is good to see. You know, it's good to see your city and your hometown kind of getting back to its feet. Yeah, damn. So when you got there, it was starting to open up or did it kind of open up as you, like over the month? Yeah, they had just, I think they opened up in November. I was there in August when everything was, I mean, pretty much the curfew was like 10 p.m. to like 5 a.m. And then right before I went back in December, they opened back up like fully. Yeah, we'd say, we definitely take that for granted stateside because we had our lockdown. But lockdown really only happened for, I want to call it like four or five months. And then after that, everyone was like, yeah, we're outside. Right. And then I I live in Atlanta, so the our lockdown was like for a week. <laughs> I don't even know if Atlanta that. ever had a lockdown. We, we had somehow like there was you know, there was a week of three days where everyone kind of pretended like they were gonna stay home. But yeah. So for going from that to like going home to Kenya and seeing that, that was definitely um different for me. Oh uh, yeah. I, the one thing I gotta say about Atlanta is I feel like that first summer Every COVID party I saw was happening in Atlanta. Y'all were having pool parties, strip clubs was, were in full effect. Yeah, fat. it was it was a bit too it was good, but it was a bit too much in terms of the other side of the world just kind of, you know, like everyone else is going through something. But between Atlanta and Houston, I think those were the two cities that just stayed open, literally. Did you get to I haven't been to Houston since pre-pandemic. So I didn't I didn't realize that they were going crazy too. <laughs> but that makes they were, sense. They were. They were. Yeah. Oh, you cut you cut out a little bit there at the end. Yeah, yeah. Okay, no, we got you back. Sometimes, so Sorry. Twitter Twitter Spaces, the it, it rugs people all the time. Uh okay. I have to be careful about that. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. But um, it was crazy since since we've been introduced. Yeah. There's been hella synergy, but like the stars haven't aligned yet for us to collab on a project. Right. Um, but every time I talk with you, it charges my spirit, right? So you were an ideal guest to have on oh, the show. Pleasure, pleasure. The whole concept behind Money Trees was, you know, I tell everyone there's no strict format, but this all centers yeah. around exploring Web3 and then like right. how it may or may not align with some of my friends and peers' careers. Because I think that the space is so new and there's so much happening, the more voices that we can hear and hear how they're, you know, approaching it, what they know about it, just hearing their own experiences, the more points people will have to relate to. So I would want to start there because we haven't talked about this at all, which is actually surprising. (laughs) But uh, (laughs) (laughs) what's what's been your experience with Web3? Um, Not much, to be honest, but with what I've kind of the little I've experienced or where I think it's going and, you know, what I think about it in general. I mean, it's I have it's 50 50 where it's exciting at the same time, scary. And I think for me, when I say exciting, it's in terms of I, I, I go back to places like Africa, where a lot is really has been controlled by big companies. And of course, same here. But, you know, in Africa, it's a bit different where even the access to Internet or it's it's always been controlled. But in this case, where if let's say 
a lot of people in Africa could get a chance to be to get access to the internet, that's going to be the money making herb. And I say that because in terms of like numbers between South America and Africa as a whole, I I always say this once every African possibly can get, you know, a phone and a smartphone with internet, that is going to be kind of the leading market in terms of web, because in terms of numbers, count, you know, it's, it's millions, you know, Nigeria alone, I always say, people say, oh, there are 200 million in that country. I'm like, no, that's who they counted. That's who has, yep. a, you know, that's who has a gate. You know what I mean? Because I remember growing up, I grew up in Kenya. I was born and raised in Kenya. I remember when the, in, that was back then, I was pretty, pretty young, but I remember that. They would come to the door and knock, and this is the census, right? So they'd come to the door and knock, and if you open, you'd say how many people you are inside, and then that was it. And then the houses that didn't have, you know, per se, a gate that they could write outside, they'd just assume, right? So I always say, like, if you look at, I, I honestly think probably Nigeria is almost in the 400 millions and that's just one country, you know, and then add all the rest. And you can see what's happening even in terms of my scene, which is music, as you know. Um, a lot of times we've always thought the music is also dictated by numbers, yes. But now because of the streaming services and everything that's going on, you get to see places like, Tanzania, which has cheap internet, and there are about 54 million people, I think, if I'm not wrong. And you can see their views, like on YouTube, are some of the highest views, more than countries like Nigeria that actually do have um, bigger populations, but the internet service is not as easily accessible, right? It's uh, very expensive in different countries, actually almost like too expensive. There's literally, it doesn't even make sense how much it is to buy um, internet. But in terms of like um, Tanzania, it's cheaper. So you get to see a lot of Tanzanian artists have millions of views within days, you know, like millions, millions and millions of views. So I, I see, I kind of put that in at the back of my mind when talking about Web3 or just where the internet space is going to. And it just kind of, it's exciting, but it's also scary in terms of like what's not going to be allowed, you know, like where's the what's what I don't know I'm a structure person as well so I don't like unknown <laughs> too much I like unknown but I'll get scared of things that are very unknown so I think that's also been my hesitation with really getting to experience um web three wow yo that was you brought up some really really dope points in there <laughs> and one thing I want to just add on top of is speaking on the African population yeah. not only do I think it's misrepresented in census numbers right the disproportionate amount of kids versus i don't say old people but older yes. people is insane there are yes. so many young people Thank on the continent saying that. Mm -hmm. it's mm -hmm. in then you think about a space like this where you know, i use my sister as kind of my barometer right. where she has grown up and pretty much always known an ipad right. she is so technically savvy at her age when i think me myself at 11 i was struggling to get online and like get onto my right. AOL. She is like able, <laughs> able to FaceTime and right. multitask and draw a piece, like you draw an art piece right. while listening to music. It's just, she's so well equipped for it. Um, and kids growing up with this technology is going to allow them to be creative in ways that we can't even comprehend right now because mm -hmm. we've never, ever been able to see that. Basically. Yep. The To your point, it's also really scary, though, because we think about things like internet access and just mm -hmm. technology or, you know, technology being accessible as a whole. Right. right. I talk to people, you know, I we also we both work with some really right. ill African musicians. Right. And we know how streaming wasn't really even a thing mm -hmm. it, it's still barely a thing like it, i still struggle in saying like okay yeah like streaming is there mm -hmm. because you know apple spotify is making their push apple music is right. making their push but it's nowhere near as established as it is in south america yet definitely the, the second that africa gets that level of we'll say like uh streaming distribution yeah it's like i said it's it, give everyone in the on the con in a smartphone and see what happens the right. entire market gets flipped on its head oh yeah like and 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 just that's just one industry and 
even recently, I keep saying, even in terms of like buying goods and everything, for example, like Kenya, Kenya, like we're just getting to Apple Pay today, right? Or not today, but it's been there, but not fairly, um, it's fairly kind of new, right? Yep. But in Kenya, we have M-Pesa. I don't know if we've talked about it. And M-Pesa, Kenya is pretty much the herb of like African technology. Like we're very forward in terms of technology. So we have this thing called M-Pesa that was created by one of the major telecom companies. So our AT&T or our T-Mobile, that's called Safaricom. And how you do it is you have a private wallet from M-Pesa. So everywhere you go, you can buy goods. So for example, I walk into Kroger or Walmart or wherever. Walmart has a specific number that I can pay to. So when I get to my till, let's say I get to the, you know, um, I'm checking out. I check out. This is my total. You're paying $100. Okay, cool. Where's the number? I pay from my phone to the number and I show the person. And they're like, okay, cool. Confirmed. Done. So there is actually no way. we I, I can go a whole year without touching money in Kenya. Because everyone either has a number or every company has a number. You know, And that's why I say sometimes it's like other countries are starting to get into that in Africa. But it also t- took some time because most countries, like a lot of the telecom companies are are literally the dictators of internet because they're the ones who control everything right now. So yeah, it's 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 interesting to see what's happening. <laughs> wow, that's okay. Yeah. So I have I have a couple of questions. Mm-hmm. Does M-Pesa work outside of Kenya, or does it only work in Kenya? So it only works in Kenya, but guess what? There's companies that have been created. I think by one of the big ones is called World Remit, and I use it. It's by I think some um, Somali. It, they're from Somali, but probably based in Kenya. And how I do it, like when I'm home, my friends always ask me, "You're not taking out cash to go?" I'm like, "No, I don't need to because if I have World Remit, I keep my card on there, or I put my card every time I do a transaction, and I just send the money to a phone number. Let's say I'm with my sister, right, and she's paying something." Sorry about that. Sorry about that. Oh, no, all good. All good. The M-Pesa number is actually directly with your, um, with, your, with your phone number. So if I'm with my sister, I can send her the money from this app that is connected to M-Pesa. So when I'm home, I don't need to use money. Or I could pay. For, I actually, if let's say I'm buying something from my cousin, I could pay my cousin without having to ever touch cash. Web3 and at least the payment rails work very, very mm-hmm. similar to if you're buying something in Ethereum or right. Bitcoin, you know, you're sending it to an address and a lot of it does work on these kind of trusted systems of what you just said. You have to show the person at the end of your till like, oh, you just did send the money here. You have to show them the confirmation. Right. It still doesn't really have full infrastructure where it's like very similar to the way credit debit card system work walmart in america the teller doesn't actually confirm anything they're just making sure that everything the electronic system itself is doing right but it's interesting to think about the how similar those habits are right and so kenya seems very 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 well equipped to adopt payment Mm -hmm. systems like Bitcoin or Ether. Do you know, um, at least in your personal experience, is it a popular, like, is it popular there? What, Bitcoin and all? Yeah. Um, It is, but not, no, it's not popular. Let me be honest. It's not that popular. (laughs) Like, it's, I think it's very, um, and this is why I say, like, the telecom companies, they, they run everything. They they literally control everything, especially when you're saying an M-Pesa that's run by Safaricom, which I was saying is like our T-Mobile or the biggest telecom company. So, and they kind of dictate how the message is sent across, right? So I think now that I'm actually speaking to you, to be honest, it's actually ringing in my head that probably that's why Bitcoin or anything else is not that popular because if they promoted that you know, that side of things, then what would M-Pesa be? Yeah, they give up their their market share. Exactly. So I think, I'm, I've never really thought about that part, but when I'm talking to you, that's when it made sense. Like, it because Kenya's pretty big on, actually, let me not say Kenya, Africa's big of e, on even um, sport um, betting. 
Yeah. And 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 very, very big. Like one of the companies called Spot Pesa is like big. Like they make a lot of money. So and it reached a point where the governments kind of had to stop them because of, you know, it, it was just easy for people to get online and bet, right? So it was more it was looked at more as gambling. So some governments kind of had to intervene and come, you know, and kind of regulate some things. But yeah, it's not it's not that popular, to be honest. I don't even hear anybody really, really talking about it in terms, unless you're in the tech scene, which the tech scene in Kenya is big, right? In Africa as a whole. But unless you're in that scene, I haven't really heard like people just casually, you know, even discuss it. Yeah, hearing you explain the way payments work there, mm-hmm. it feels so aligned with a lot of the like I like was saying, the way Bitcoin and Ether work. But you could lose some of the middlemaning. So all the money that Safaricom makes and what they have yes. to charge and that those costs eventually get pushed onto the consumer. And so Kenyans could have almost an identical payment system to what they currently have, yeah. but be able to keep a much larger portion of their money. Cause that's one thing I do know, regardless of the country is sending money outside right. of the country on the continent is very, very costly. Exactly. Where there's tons of fees, tons of conversions, tons of other middlemen that get in mm-hmm. the way. And so I, I've been of the belief that the way for NFTs to really kind of gain ground mm-hmm. in that space is going to have to be through decentralized finance first, because yep. people have such a need for you know better payment systems and more affordable online right. banking options that they can't really worry about the trading of art yet because you need to actually have the crypto to purchase it. Exactly. So yeah, I've been I've been it's really I'm I'm really glad we got to chop and hear that because <laughs> I wasn't yeah. familiar with the Kenyan side of it. Right. I'm even with the Nigeria side too much. I'm I'm learning a bit more. I would say I'm most familiar with South Africa right. and just the potential ways that it can work there. There's a couple of communities that I'll send to you um, mm-hmm. after this, mm-hmm. like African NFT community, and they're a collection of African artists, both on the continent and stateside, right. that are sh- be, uh, making their way as NFT artists and artists in the Web three space, mm-hmm. and it's really really ill. But it's so small. Like when we talked yeah. about the amount of people that are there, you know, we're talking a community, and it's not to knock them. It's not small. Right. Um, it's like it's not small because it has to be. It's just small because of any number of reasons. I again, right. we, well, I guarantee it will grow. But they're at maybe yes, ten thousand. Like the biggest community has maybe ten thousand followers on Twitter. And that's uh, nuts to think about because especially because they're not even country specific. Right. Like they are trying to represent the diaspora as a whole. Mm. And it's going to be so exciting to me watching more Africans get onboarded on this. We actually just bought um, a piece for from an artist in Nigeria named Kazi, the creator. Oh, and he's, nice. Yeah, he's super, super talented. And I've been diving way more into the African NFT space. Oh, and I'm like amazed. It was like when I discovered gold <laughs> for the first time. And for every South African that heard me just say, I'm not going to repeat it again. No, I cannot <laughs> pronounce the Q correctly. <laughs> but <laughs> that and I'm a piano. And yeah. I, just like, yo, know, the, the textures, the way it made me feel, the way the art resonated with me. Right. It was very, very, very interesting. And I'm excited about those possibilities in the same web three decentralized space. Right. Cause it'll put, it'll take a lot of power away from the corporations that have been running yep. Africans, uh, you know, finances essentially for yep. the majority of these artists lives, if not their entire lives go- dating back generations. Exactly. Exactly. When you say, when you say the way it made you feel, what do you mean? Like in terms of, um, it was, it was new, it was fresh, it was exciting. And it's yeah. like, Yo, there's a different story behind this. Right. And I was talking with Kazi, and I hope I'm saying yeah. it right. It might be Kosi, because K-O-S-I. Yeah. Um, yeah. I was talking with him in DMs, and mm. it ended up buying the art on his birthday, which was super cool. But he was showing me other art that he had made, other artists that he was working mm-hmm. with. Yeah. And it was just this exposure to something that I hadn't seen before. And it was yeah. fresh and it was fire amongst this community, but it hadn't yet reached me. and. Yeah. 
I love kind of being on the quote unquote bleeding edge of things like that. And America is, is fire, but mm-hmm. we have a lot of derivatives and it's a lot of copycats and it's a lot of people just yeah. trying to do something else they saw someone else do because that person got popular. Right. And I don't know, that's not as interesting to me. I don't want to knock it. I think popular right. things are fire. I love plenty of popular things. Right. But I, I want to be on the fringes. I want to be out kind of tapping in with these artists and creators that have a different world view than what I'm used to and exactly. seeing what comes from that. And yeah. so, yeah, that's what I meant by like the way it makes gotcha. me feel. Gotcha. Yeah. That's definitely going to be um, a game changer for for sure. It's just, I guess we just have to see where it's going or where it's headed to. Yeah, it's the the another scary thing is the fact that we mentioned that Africa really is just getting into streaming now. Yeah. And I don't want it to be a case of oh web3 and NFTs and I don't think it will be, but mm-hmm. I want to make sure I'm working on making it a case where the continent isn't getting into this space in 6 years after right. all of the power players have already right. been established because right. right now streaming is dope but yep. it's who are we saying oh spotify apple music all of the giants already coming in yep. and just applying their philosophy to this space yeah i'm more excited about like yo what happens when africa is actually building at the same time as everyone else instead right. of getting access to the tech later Sadly, you're right, but sadly, some of the companies that actually want to benefit, like I mentioned, whether it's, um, what's it called, um, Safaricom, they'll want that to happen. You know, they'll want Africa to, they'll want Africa to be late. You know what I mean? That's, that's actually a main, that's, that's the only part that scares me and people in power, some of the richest African men who, or women who are in power or or in control of the banking systems or the music itself or the art itself or just different products so that's that's kind of where i'm like i hope just as you're saying and true maybe we all need to kind of just play a part in terms of like making sure it's included as we move forward there will be you know there will be good opportunities but there's that fact that i'm like even just common internet. Why is internet? Why do you have to pay a killing? Like I never get a local line when I go home. Cause I'm like, it'll take me probably 50 days a day to use my phone freely. So I just roam when I'm in Kenya. Like everyone's like, you're not, no, I'm not doing that. I pay per month and per month I get what I get. You know what I mean? But because they want to make so much money from just the everyday situations or just, you know, everybody in Africa, they don't, they make sure that internet is expensive, you know? Yeah, it's it's going to be challenging, yep. quote unquote, you know, overthrowing the powers that be. But I do think that it starts with conversations like this that'll just happen in one-to-ones where it's like, you know, me and you, right. I'm sure we're going to leave this with some ideas and then talk amongst our circles and hopefully we can keep spreading that way. Definitely. And just that word of mouth can help spread faster. I want to help onboard way more people giving yeah. more people the tools because this shit is complicated right it <laughs> just is complicated. being real it it's is not complicated. simple mm-hmm. and it needs to get simpler it needs to feel uh as simple as a lot of these companies made right. web 2 for us right we're signing up for an email account i use this example of mm-hmm. you may not know what tcp ip protocol is Mm-mm. but you know how to send an email right <laughs> and that's fine. It's like, oh, okay, cool. Right. I know how email works. Right. But I don't necessarily know exactly what's happening with my email. Right. And if we can help further that education, yeah. I think we're in a unique position too because we work with musicians. Right. And so much of what kids pay attention to on the continent is from the arts and from entertainment. Yes. And so if we can help educate more of the musicians, more of the people with influence, it's going to be very, very difficult for the powers that be to kind of stop it. We, we it. see that they just let Twitter back in right. to Nigeria. and But I know a tons of Nigerians that have still been on Twitter this entire time. They were Basically. VPNing it up. Yeah. If you give people the tools and the know-how how to get around it or how to get access to something, right. If it's worth it, they'll spend the time to go and get it. So You're right. You're right. And I'm I'm actually very I'm glad you brought me on this because I'm very interested in, you know, being con- 
continuing this conversation even after um, this. So for sure. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. We're planting a tree and now we got to water it and nourish it and make sure it grows. (laughs) Exactly. Yep. I do want to switch gears just a little bit and talk about some of the practical ways that I thought you may be able to get involved being in Atlanta and working with the artists that you do. Right. Toye has a video called Answer Me. Right. And it is one of my favorite music videos I've seen in the last two years. And it stands out really? to me. Yeah, I love it. It is personality. I love I love uh, like callbacks. And he did the whole as seen on TV, um, shopping channel, late night QVC setup with that. And it felt really like it felt really warm. Like I felt like I don't know, it just felt good watching it. And the personality was on display. And it reminded me of how his music kind of felt when I listened to it. And the video, it got some decent attention on YouTube, but I was thinking, man, it wouldn't amount to how certain collectors would want to have this visual in their collection. And I started thinking about just some of the Web3 protocols and platforms that exist. And I recently got put onto one called Glass. And so I tweeted Glass in the pinned tweet here in the space. So you can check it out when we get off. But the way Glass works is you start off and there's like an unlimited amount of the video that can be bought. But every time somebody buys it, the price goes up a little bit more. Really? And you don't have to give, yeah, you don't have to give away any rights to it. I think, you know, right for, I'm going to use Fiat. Uh, like fiat currency, but mm-hmm. let's say it starts at three hundred. Right. The next one may cost three fifteen. Mm. The next one will be three thirty, so on and so forth. And so, if you can get ten sales of a video, that could potentially cover a budget for a smaller artist. If the video is really, really fire and people just want to support it, right. they can do it in a way that they really can't do on YouTube. And it's just, it's a different system. It's a different format. Oh, wow. I definitely think something like that would be ill for an artist like Toye, where I talked earlier about feeling and the way that when I see some art that I connect with, I want to find a bunch of different ways to support that artist. So that's one thing that I think is pretty actionable. Another thing is, um, I don't know if you're familiar with Catalog or Sound XYZ or um, Mint Mm -hmm. songs, but I'm going to send you all of these when we get off and let you look at it because Toye is just another artist that has great aesthetic, great music, and has such a good personality that collectors in this space, yeah, for (laughs) sure, collectors in this space would want to be a part of his journey. And even though the label situation hasn't been as fruitful as we would like to see, this is another way for him to start generating buzz and also yeah. generating revenue to further grow that buzz. Right, right. Oh, I'm interested. I'm all in. <laughs> yeah. Okay, heck yeah. Heck yeah. yeah. <laughs> I figured the but video yeah. one would connect. Yeah. <laughs> and the the one thing that's kind of cool with this, and we're still, I'm, I'm trying to stop saying we're really early, but we are early. Yeah. There's going to be a lot of different blockchains that come about that right. better suit the continent right. where this project we're talking about with Toye is going to yeah. be ill, but it's on Ethereum and there's a certain like barrier of entry just financially that comes there. Sure. And I think it's important because it's like, okay, for him as an artist, what you do is you can say you have collections that may be on ETH, but there's also blockchains especially ones that are reverberating in the African NFT community like Tezos, where it's actually nearly free to, tr- to transact on it. Where right now buying an NFT may cost you something like $90 to mint. On Tezos, it would be free. And when we think about the fact most people can, not most people, but a lot of people cannot afford access to the internet, having these other blockchains available that have lower barriers of entry, lower cost basis, will allow more people to start getting into it. So right. while I am recommending the kind of more pricey side to it, yeah, there is, uh, there's like, it. yeah, there's more entry level ways to get involved. That I'm, I'm gonna send you like a whole onboarding piece. That's yes, kind of please. been my, uh, <laughs> yeah, my takeaway or my call to action after each episode is. That's nice. Yeah, I wanted to hear about what it is you're building, how you're looking at the space, yeah. and then think, okay, cool. We just planted this tree. 
what can we do do. yes exactly what are the action items how can i help further what it is you want to build how can i help further your goals so we can look back on this episode six months a year two years from now and say yep we did what we We said we did it yeah love it love it so um yeah winnie thank you thank you thank you for coming and joining me this is i just want to say i appreciate you so much i know ever since we got um connected by um ramos it's always been love and i appreciate you yeah some people just it's it's the energy it's always on point like always try to be there and it's like again my spirit is charged every time we talk yeah hearing hearing about it in pesa and i'm just in my (laughs) mind like yo wait a second some of that stuff i'll send you some of that stuff just so that you can see how ahead some of those african companies are yeah definitely definitely you got my mind running on that yep so i've got two questions before i let you jump the first one is what is your seed phrase now the seed phrase is to shorten it just a quote that you live by that sums up what it is you're trying to accomplish here or in the web3 space right i think i always go by by love for love because i feel like everything you do should be from a place of love and i think as we also enter this space that's quite unknown to us and where there are no really barriers in what you can do and what you can't do that's always something that we should remember at the end of the day we're still human you know what i mean Ooh. yo this has been a fire week for seed phrases <laughs> by love for love, for love. I, I love it right right <laughs> And then the last question I have is at the end of each episode, I take the custom money trees note and I list it as a one of one NFT. The guest determines the price of the NFT. So what would you like your money trees number 16 note to be listed at? Oh, my God. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it can be anything. It can be anything. Um, I don't know. try to see i don't know suggestions what what have the other (laughs) um (laughs) so it ranges it ranges from 0.05 eth which is about a hundred and thirty dollars 140 Mm dollars up to one of my homies (laughs) had a had a field day took it took it too far (laughs) two two 2.2 million so (laughs) yeah there's one million let's keep it at one million let's keep it there i want to be like your friend i want to i want to stretch out yo i'm i'm here for it i'm supporting it i think let's let's aim high we're gonna aim right (laughs) It, it inspires me to make this the biggest talk show on the and, planet and i and i i know it will get there so we'll, so, we'll yeah. get back to this episode and be like we did something right after after we get the, the million yes. dollar sale it's like yes. okay yeah that was yeah, yeah. That, that was, was on point. quite <laughs> yeah <laughs> Oh man, okay, okay. This has been Money Trees number 16 with Winnie K. Thank you for joining me. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day and week. And yeah, we got we got some work to do when we get off this. So I'm gonna definitely hit you. thank you so much. This was fun and very informative. So thank you. Hey.